My question was for Senator Thorpe, who publicly today supported the Palestine in, in, the, in government, but was silent about the anti-Semitic threats faced by the Australian Jewish community. Shouldn't an elected representative have the safety of the Australian community as their number one concern? She's not here to answer for herself, but you, you <laughs> mentioned that. James, I'll bring you in first on this. Um, there has been a lot of discussion about the denouncement of, or, or the lack of denouncement of anti-Semitism. Well, that, that's a question for, for those people to answer in terms of their failure to condemn what happened to, to the citizens of Israel, Israel the weekend before last. I think everybody on, the, on this panel and everybody in the audience would condemn what happened the weekend before last. I'm not going to hear to, to speak for anyone else, but I am just genuinely appalled about what happened to those people in Israel and I am still visibly angry about what happened. And I think Australia must stand by Israel. And if Israel asks for support, we should give that support. Um, Patrick, the Prime Minister has actually been criticised for not being quick enough to denounce the anti-Semitism. And this is... Th there has been a division, actually, between your mm. two sides of politics on the pace of the response, the strength of the response. Do you understand that criticism? Do you think some of it is fair? Well, I think you've, uh, you saw the speech that the Prime Minister gave here in Melbourne last week, uh, standing very strongly with the Jewish community here in Australia. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that is a fair criticism. If you saw what he said in Parliament today, you wouldn't think that is a fair criticism. Uh, and I've been speaking... Uh, I've got a large Jewish community in my electorate of Perth in Western Australia. I've been speaking to them and um, what they have said to me is they've appreciated... And I want to point out the strong bipartisan support for Israel and Israel's right to defend itself, uh, but also the strong bipartisan support for the Jewish community here in Australia. And that's not just from the Commonwealth Government. I'd really like to acknowledge that uh, a number of states have stepped up their efforts in providing additional uh, assurance and security advice. Um, it, like, I've been speaking to a range of people. I know how, uh, how concerned the community is. And unfortunately, that's exactly what Hamas wants. When they're putting this stuff out on social media, when they're running their propaganda machine, they want people in countries like Australia, where we are so fortunate to be generally a harmonious, multicultural society, where we take sometimes our security and safety for granted. They want us to be scared about what might happen here. They want people of the Jewish faith to feel like they are not just under attack in Israel, but under attack across the world. Uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure that that is not the reality here. Okay. Um, but I do really acknowledge that um, it's time that all leaders need to show strong support uh, for those particularly in the Jewish community here in Australia. Right? Dion, I'd love to hear more about your own story. Uh, do you, and, but firstly, just do you feel like there's been a denouncement of the anti-Semitic chant that we heard that was shared on social media from, from our political leaders? I, I mean, I feel... I mean, last, last week at the Opera House, I think that the, some of the chants of F the Jews and gas yeah. the Jews was... You know, there was it was public, and I actually don't think that, this, that there was full condemnation from, from the Greens party, for, for for example, who today didn't support the the motion in Canberra. Um, I I mean, there are, there are conversations in, in Australia about whether Jewish schools should should tell their students not to wear school uniforms because it identifies them as students. My my daughter's childcare has now had a conversation whether they should have an armed guard stand outside um, as a protection. So th these are experiences happening now in Melbourne, Sydney, in, in Perth, that, I, um, that the recent events are actually yeah. affecting Australia. And Dion, how would you describe the sense of f fear at the moment in the community? I, I've, I, I mean, I've never felt this sort of fear in my life. I mean, I, I think that this is probably the first time where truly the, the, entire, the entire Jewish community is, is, is scared of what's going to happen. They're scared of the future, is scared of how the, the impact of what's happening in Israel and to be honest, the, the protests around the world and where that will where that will lead. What are you worried about, Dion? I mean, personally, I'm worried about my family yeah. safety. I'm, I, I genuinely believe. I mean, there were there was a neo-Nazi um, parade of Flinders Street Station over the weekend that you know police were standing there and, and allowed them to get on the on the train. So I think that this is not new news, but it kind of feels like it's bubbling up to the surface a little bit more, and, and it's a lot more visible. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just trying to get the sense of do you feel like our authorities, in terms of the policing and the response, are just not matching the fear that you have? I, I think I think that's this, the the protests in Sydney is probably the, the biggest 
I mean, Jews were told not to not to enter the CBD. So, and that that is probably the the most concerning time for me. There, are, I mean, I know lots of people who 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 are choosing not to wear a kippah on their head in the city because they don't want to show that they're Jewish, and I, I don't blame them at the moment. I, I don't think that the authorities are a kind of stopping the the anti-Semitism early enough. And and to be honest, words matter. Yep. And I think that I think that Senator Thorpe had a chance today. And I think that the Greens Party had a chance today to support the motions by the Liberal and Labor Party, and, and they chose not to. Mm. Well, they're not here. Um, they were invited. Senator Thorpe was invited, though. But D. Madigan, obviously, and that's not. Thanks for sharing that. I know that's really personal, but I've heard that from a lot of my own friends who are Jewish that they actually genuinely feel scared to be in Melbourne and Sydney, which is mm. unthinkable. I, well, I think um, before social media organising those things was tricky and that's now changed like protests and these people these sort of extremists can connect to each other in a sort of an underground way through discord or whatsapp and that and and it is terrifying that you know we want freedom of speech we want to protect our privacy but also you kind of you know there's a balancing act at what point should police be able to sort of get into these groups and see what's happening before people are hurt mm. There was a call from your side, uh, I think it was Peter Dutton, about people who might be on visas to be deported. I mean, we don't know who, if anyone was on a visa, but is that... Why is that, like, the response that was offered? Isn't well, there another way of trying to sort of sort this out and trying to get to the bottom of this? No, because we would not, we would not let someone into Australia who had publicly said, gas the Jews, we would not let them into Australia because they would be seen mm. as a threat to public safety in Australia. So if someone is here in Australia as our guest on a, on a, on a visa, which is a, a temporary form to allow people to, to stay in this country, and they have gone and they have shouted and they are saying, gas the Jews, Let's, then quite frankly, yeah. we should kick them out of this country. Yeah. I just they want to not, say that they do term... Not share our, sorry, sorry, they don't share our liberal values. No, they don't. And, and can I just say that term I know is really triggering for people who might be watching, so we repeat it because we heard it in a chant, but I'm also very aware of that, and I'm... I don't know, Alexander, where you stand on it, it makes me uncomfortable to even... Hear it. I don't want people to watch and hear that, even though well, you're right. It was said. It was. It mm. was said yeah. at a public protest. It was shouted by hundreds of people. And the one person who was arrested on that on that evening in Sydney was the one person carrying a Star of David flag. That is the message that the New South Wales Police sent to the Jewish community of Sydney. Um, Patrick, just want to bring you in on the mm. deporting people. I mean, what happens if they're Australians? Uh, well, they're not well, on visas. Can't, yeah, well, they can't <laughs> be. Yeah. That's what so, I mean. Like, it's that no, no, a social yeah. cohesion I mean, the issue. The argument well, is about um, as the British government has been doing this as well, deporting people who, if you like, are on visitors' visas, and who join these demonstrations and make grotesque, anti-Semitic comments, just boot them out. Um, and it seems to me that um, you, you know, in public life. With public policy, you want to keep it simple. And we should be unequivocal in our support of the Jewish community, unequivocal at this time. They should have every confidence, every confidence that people in authority, state and federal governments, police and so on, are right behind them and will protect them. And if there are people in demonstrations, they're Australian citizens, fair enough, but if there are people in demonstrations who are visitors to this country, on visitors' visas to this country, who are inciting violence and hate, they should be kicked out of the country okay. Patrick? forthwith. Well, and if you breach your visa conditions because you breach Australian law, then that is almost always what happens. Uh, but I think if we go to the other point, which is ultimately... Uh, uh, whatever status you are in Australia, whether you're an Australian citizen, whether you are here on a visa, uh, this behaviour is just not acceptable. And I don't want to sort of say that it's, you know, dealt with differently here or there. Like, it's just unacceptable. It's not... And it's actually unacceptable even if you're not in Australia. Like, what we need to be doing is actually saying, calling out, this is hate speech, I won't repeat it. This is hate speech. It is unacceptable. We don't tolerate it. Uh, we call it out and, where it breaches Australian law, we deal with it appropriately. Okay. Um, I want to go to our next...